Hola amores, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I created this beautiful fall design using my nail acrylic line VN products. I use the color Espresso, which is this beautiful chocolate color number 36. This gold color here is called Treasure Eye, one of my favorites. And um, everyone's current favorite for the fall is called Transcend. And these are the six colors that I'm going to be using throughout the design. I'm using our number 16 Kalinsky nail brush. This cutting knife tool here is what I'd be using for the quilted pattern on the pinky. And of course, I am using our extra, extra large coffin clear nail tips. Um, to apply the um, beads on the quilted pattern, I'll be using our Jewel Gel Bonder. I'll be using our Velvet Matte Top Shine. And I also will be using our 3D um, nail brush for the flower. Here, I already did the pop-off method. Um, I prepped my nails for you guys off camera. Um, I didn't prep how you would originally prep nails because again, I will be popping these nails off after I am finished with the design. I did uh, apply some clear acrylic to get started. Okay, so starting out with this beautiful espresso color, we're going to grab a rather medium to larger bead and you're just going to wait for the color bead to polymerize. In other words, you're gonna wait for it to come to a shine consistency. That is when it's ready to apply. And I'm going to fade the bead upwards. That's so when I use the second color to blend in for the ombre, it is a much uh, better transition, a much better fade. And so I'm just gently fading that upwards. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just drag and pull down the rest of the bead downwards. Now for those of you who are new uh, to doing nails, the way that you pull down this beautiful bead downwards um, is basically tapping. Make sure that your brush is flat as so, like a fan, you know, and then you're going to tap, tap, and pull and move left to right. So you see I'm tapping and pulling and going left and right. And that's going to make sure that the bead is nice and flush, nice and flat. And you wanna make sure that you're pushing it using the body of your brush and pushing it to the shape of the nail tip. That's going to help with so much time at the end um, when it comes to filing. If you already can contour the acrylic to the shape that you already have, I guarantee you that filing will be less. Now, if you can see here, I do need a little bit at the corner left. So I'm just taking a small bead like you see here. I'm going to apply that right at the corner edge and I'm just going to fade that upwards. I'm making sure that the bead is nice and flush to the rest of the bead that I have already applied. And there you have it. Now for the second part, um, to create this ombre, I'm using the color Soft Tan. Um, as you can see, you guys, I use this color a lot. I feel like it complements my uh, skin tone a lot. and I, I, I do love it <laughs> um, so I'm going to work in small um, beads here I usually would take like um, one full bead sometimes two but I believe here I did three um, that's because I want to take my time blending it to this brown color and so I started with a small to medium bead as you can see it faded out nicely I do want the fade to be more to meet more towards the middle so you'll see that um, I'll fix that a little bit later here I'm taking the second bead and I'm going to apply near the cuticle and just push towards the cuticle and you're just gonna let that acrylic hug the um, cuticle line for you Anytime that you see my brush leaving the video, it is because I am wiping it on a paper towel and I'm dipping right back into my monomer. 
and all I'm doing here is just making sure that I'm cleaning the sides. As you can see, what I was talking about earlier, I wanted the fade to meet more towards the middle, so I just took another small bead, placed it um, right there so that it can fade right towards the middle. Now, if you're happy with where the fade is, that is completely up to you. This is just my preference. Now you want to expect inspect your nails and as you can see right there I if I leave that alone that is going to be prone to cracking like if I was to smash my finger or something like that it can get weak there so I want to make sure that you add a little bit more acrylic if that is the case on your end as well so I'm going ahead and reinforce that corner with adding more acrylic Also on the other side, I feel as though it needs it as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and add another small bead to that side as well and reinforce that corner. Now, normally I would probably edit all this out and for the viewers eye, it will look like I apply this perfectly but because I don't want you guys to feel that you know I'm this perfect uh, nail tech I do want to show that I do go in and I inspect the nails I you know do the adjustments that I have to do so I want you guys to be aware and I didn't edit that part out now moving forward i'm going to create a deep uh, smile line french sometimes i could do this in one full bead other times two sometimes three i think in this particular case i did three beads for this um so what i do is i start a little bit towards the middle of the nail bed and i extend it forward down and into like a um i want to say a u so you don't if you do a V then that's like a deep V line but because we're doing a smile line it's more like a U so I'm just dragging that to that point fixing the side walls and if you don't get this perfect it is okay once the acrylic dries you can actually go in with a hand file and you can clean up those edges and um, the deep smile line and you can crisp them up with the file I don't like um, using a file in between because of all the nail dust and then you have to get up and wash your hands and all of that so I just try my best to create um, the shape that I want with the acrylic without needing to you know file anything but in the event of I do use the file if I need to now I apply the second bead and with the body of my brush I am pulling it downwards to connect to that first bead now I'm taking a smaller bead and applying it just towards the cuticle, pushing very lightly towards the cuticle, making sure that it's nice and clean, and then I blend it downwards to the bead. Now, you can see here that there's not a great transition. That is because when I grabbed the bead, I grabbed it a little bit too dry. And because I grabbed it too dry, um, it, it started hardening, hardening immediately and when I try to blend it, it was already cooking. So 
no worries all i did was grab a little bit more um, acrylic make sure it was a little bit more wet and apply it right there so that it could blend very nicely and once you apply once you file and apply like your top coats um that won't be noticeable so i'm very happy and satisfied with the way that they that came out i can go in with the file and clean it up a bit but i figured the way that i'm going to apply the, gl uh, the glitter around it that i didn't need to do all of that so i'm just moving on to the ring finger and with a very wet bead we're going to grab soft 10 and espresso and we're going to create a marble effect again you want to make sure that your beads are wet very wet for this um, particular part of um marbling and the reason why i fade a little bit downwards is because i want the acrylic to be flushed i don't want any lumps therefore when i add this uh, um, glitter acrylic it's not so lumpy so here i'm adding the glitter transcend and um when i when it comes to working with glitters I love to leave like a clear um, glassy look I feel like it just pops out the acrylic the glitter acrylic more so when I do tend to use glitters you'll see that I leave I don't like fill up the whole space with the glitter acrylic I like to leave some spots where it's just to clear so as you can see, I'm applying Treasure Eye and gently pushing it towards the um, cuticle, making sure I don't flush that cuticle. It's the most important part. And so I'm just gently pushing. And so I grab a little bit more of Treasure Eye and kind of just blend it in a little bit with tr um, Transcend. And again, just leaving that tip a little bit clear just so that it can have that nice glass effect. Moving on to the middle finger again. I'm just going to go and use the color Transcend and we're just going to fill in the side walls um, gently a bead at a time. When it comes to applying chunky glitters and you're trying to fill in that side wall near the cuticle, try to remove the big parts of the acrylic. Um, and just try to use the finer bits so that it can um, create a nice full illusion. Sometimes when you leave like a big piece of acrylic, it kind of messes up the shape. And so you want to make sure that you have more of the finer glitters. I'm going to show you right here what I mean. So you're going to see that I'm filling up the side and one of the big chunky glitters get in my way. And I'm going to show you what I mean about removing it as it will, it, it just won't make it look as clean. Okay, so right there, you see how there's a big glitter in the way. I left that on purpose and I'm trying to fix it so you guys can see how it just kind of, it don't work. So I removed it and I put it towards the bottom instead. And I go back in and I grab the much finer bits of the glitter. And it'll allow for me to have a nice sleek look. And I'm gonna finish the middle nail with Treasure Eye. Again, I'm trying not to have the tip so, um, so full with the acrylic. I kinda wanna leave that glass trans translucent look.
and to give it that nice ombre illusion i went ahead and grabbed a little bit more of the transcend acrylic and just apply a few dashes um, blending it into the gold I love the way this is looking so far I'm just in love with these colors um, as I started the design I didn't know how I was going to be looking and you just fall in love with your work as you go and not all the time am I perfect you guys I've had so many designs where I start and I end up scratching them and throwing them out because I do not like them and I feel like though we shouldn't even do that because sometimes I end up posting a set that I didn't like and it, it'd be the most one to go viral and I'd be shocked because I'm like I didn't like this design I went ahead my husband will tell me just post it I like it just see how it does you know just put some content up there and i'd be like you know what you're right and then it goes viral and i'm like you know what we need to stop second guessing ourselves um it is what it is you know be creative and um just 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 go for it now right here um i noticed that while i was applying soft 10 i had a bigger bead than intended so i kind of covered the whole uh espresso part of the color so what I did was I dipped my brush in um, liquid and I started removing um, before that acrylic dried I started removing some of that soft tan and then I went back with espresso um, and kind of just faded that back right in um, for this part, um, I didn't use a cutting tool for the brown part. I just used the brush because I wanted you guys to see that you can also achieve a nice clean line with the brush if you are working um, in the time frame that the acrylic is not fully dry. Now, once the acrylic is a bit harder to manipulate and move and mess around with then you can use the um, cutter tool like I did here for the gold part and then to finish off this thumb I went ahead and just applied transcend again leaving that nice clear tip Okay, now moving on, we're almost finished here, moving on with the pinky design. As you can see, I took a very large bead because I'm not going to be encapsulating this design. Um, so I want to make sure that the actual nail itself is a nice, thick consistency. You don't want a flat look. You know, you don't want it to be um, too thin that it can uh, break. So I did take a very uh, big bead here and at the same time i'm trying to work a bit fast because you don't want the acrylic to dry fully on you because you will not be able to create those indents um obviously because the acrylic is hard i know a lot of people they will create the ombre and then what they do is encapsulate it with the clear and actually make the indentations on top of the clear acrylic that works out nice as well but i wanted the colors to be very prominent and i wanted the actual cut to be on top of the two color fade so i'm trying to work um as fast as i could here but as clean as i could as well um i went ahead and oh another tip is you don't want to start at your nail bed or cuticle why because uh acrylic dries quicker in warm temperatures and when you apply the acrylic on your nail bed you're actually warm so the acrylic on the nail bed is going to is going to harden much more quicker than anything that's after the free edge meaning everything all the product that's on the tip of your nails will harden slower than what's on the bed of your nails because the heat from your body from your nail beds is actually helping the speeding process of that acrylic drying if that makes sense 
So you want to work very fast here because, again, the bead that's on the nail bed is going to be cooking faster than what's on the free edge. So because we know that the acrylic starts drying and it becomes sticky, that is why you see me dipping my tool on the acrylic. And that's going to help avoid the acrylic to get stuck on the knife. And you're going to get a much cleaner cut throughout. And um, as I'm going, I'm dipping it on the brown. As I get to the soft tan part, I was supposed to start dipping it on the soft tan. But I was on a time crunch, crunch here. I knew that, you know, that soft tan was drying up on me. So I just went ahead and continued dipping it on the brown. And you know, it didn't end up being a mess or anything like that. If anything, it gave the illusion that there was still that brown acrylic underneath. So I was okay with it. And you wanna take, it's like you wanna take your time, but you also wanna move fast because again, the longer you take, the more difficult it becomes to indent in the acrylic because the acrylic every second that's passing by it is hardening so i was very glad that i was able to finish now as you can see i am just trying to um clean up those lines a little bit more better because as i went uh the acrylic moved a little bit and so i'm just um touching up those spots there I was trying to um, have a good uh, hold on the foundation so that I can press as much as I can <laughs> as you can see I tried to fix that but it was already a done deal the acrylic was cooked it was hard there was no more indentations that I could have done especially again near the um, nail bed area so this is how she's looking so far i'm very happy with this look and we're just going to go ahead and encapsulate the design again i'm not encapsulating the pinky design but i am going to encapsulate every other um every other finger every other nail i did sped up a little bit just a little bit the video because you know you guys can see i'm just encapsulating making sure that um, it is flushed and so that I don't have to do a lot of filing towards the end.
as you saw here um when the acrylic runs back that is because i took a much wetter bead um and the reason why i do this I, you can see i don't go and remove the excess liquid on the paper towel is because i do want my bead to be a little bit runnier um so that i can have gravity work with me so when i put point the finger downwards the acrylic flows downwards for me and it kind of level itself out so if you were wondering um, if the acrylic is super runny, that is why. It's because I intentionally um, make sure that I have a much wetter bead consistency. Now, I decided to apply the little small beads now. Um, I could have went and filed the nails first, but because I just finished um, encapsulating it, I wanted to give it some time to cure. And so I was like, you know what, let me just go ahead and put the beads. Um, so right here I'm using our Jewel Gel Bonder. Um, I use, this is a three-in-one gel. You can actually use it to adhere your stones or you can actually apply it as a gel top shine. It's a no wipe, no cleanse gel. So there's no sticky layer. That's what I love about it. And you can also use it as a builder gel. So my main use for it is obviously um, adhering any pieces of jewels or beads. And as you can see here, I am just um, making sure that I grab a nice decent amount of the jewel gel bonder and you want to make sure that when you apply the beads that the, the actual gel hugs around the beads. That's to make sure that your beads will last a longer time. So I went ahead and I did cure the half um, portion because I didn't want the beads to slide all over. So I went ahead and cure that half portion first and then I'm gonna finish the other half. And when you cure it, you want to make sure that you cure it for the full 60 seconds. And again, you want to make sure that you push those beads inside the gel. The gel is going to be like a barrier. If you see that there's no barrier around your jewels or your beads, then most likely um, they may pop off and so you want to make sure that you don't overdo it with the gel because you don't want to cover the top of your jewels but you do want to create a nice little barrier around them so after i put the beads you can see here that i'm going in with our 100 180 file and i'm just hand filing the sides before using the e-file for the cuticle area Now, um, I do want to recommend, if you are doing this pinky design, I would say file the sides first um, before applying those beads. Um, I wish I would have filed it first, um, but it's, it's okay. It was not a big deal. But as I was filing, I'm like, you know what? I should have filed the, the sides and the tip. You can see she is really thick there. So again, it's not thin. Um, I didn't encapsulate it. It's not a big deal because again, I did it very nice and thick But again, just make sure you file before applying the beads
and even though it seems here that I apply my acrylic really nice um, you still see that I do have to file um, in order to get that nice crisp shape that I'm looking for you still got to round out the edges and all of that good stuff so yeah <laughs> Now moving on to my e-file, I'm going to use a, a speed 5 near the cuticle area. Now the higher the speed, the less pressure you have to do on the nails, which is a good thing. You want to know what speed to use in what areas. And I recommend that near the cuticle, you do have a low speed and not a lot of pressure. You're just cleaning up that cuticle area. And then when you go towards like your nail bed and the free edge and all you know the top of the nail then you want to increase that speed therefore you you're not applying so much pressure to the nails and the and the file is actually working with you not against you Once you're done using your e-file, you want to go ahead and buff your nails so that it can have a smooth finish so that when you apply your gel top coats, you have that nice flushed finish. 
now moving forward i'm going to be um, using our no cleanse gel top shine for the rest of the nails i was going to have the pointer finger matte top coat but i decided to change my mind since i was going to do a 3d flower on top of that nail and the 3d was already going to be a matte finish I didn't want it to be matte on matte, so I decided to have a shine background instead. Here's the look so far. I am so in love with these colors. It just screams fall throughout. Um, I thought I was done here, guys. I started putting the cuticle oil, and then I realized, oh shoot, I need to do the 3D um, flower. So I would have done the cuticle um the oil on the cuticles towards the end but again like i said i, I thought i was finished <laughs> um but yes let's move on to this 3d flower um like my past videos it's kind of the same thing i went ahead and used my jewel gel bonder i created a nice little drop there and once i apply that jewel in the middle it will push the gel around creating a border around the jewel and you'll see that by when I apply the beads they're sticking on to that uh, gel that's around the diamond itself and so I'm using that same access gel that created that border for that diamond to adhere these beads after you're done you want to cure uh, this for at least 30 seconds I did the full 60 just to make sure that it's nice and cure. Now I'm creating this 3D flower using three colors, um, Expresso number 36. Um, the red you see there is number uh, 14. And then the orange that you see there is number 25, Burnt. So what I did was I infused these three colors together to get like that nice fall leaf look. I always add acetone to my monomer in order for the acrylic to dry faster and um, in order for it to help me create these dents that you see happening here and while the acrylic is drying you want to go ahead and use your 3d brush sculpting brush and create these nice little dents And by doing so, you want to start off at the middle, like I, uh, like you saw in the video here, guys. What happens is when you start pushing the acrylic in the middle, you'll have the same amount of acrylic pushing left as you are going to have it pushing to the right. And then once you have that even amount of acrylic, then um, you're able to create uh, a nice pattern of these indents. Another thing I want to point out here for you, um, for you guys is that um, you have to be very careful. In this particular 3D that I'm creating, you can see that I actually have a um, gel top coat shine on the background. And because I have that going on, the acrylic is going to be sliding all over the place, you know? Um, as if, let's say I had a rough background and there was no gel top coat, then the acrylic would adhere um, to acrylic much more quicker but because there is that um, gel top finish on the background then the acrylic is going to be sliding and so you want to be careful with that okay so I know some people would rather do the 3d first and then they um, seal the side they seal the nail with the gel with the shine gel um, afterwards so that's completely up to you. If you're new to this, I do suggest to do that. I would suggest for you to do the 3D first and then apply the gel top coat around it. Um, but if not, you know, you can do like I did right here. Um, I wanted a much more cleaner look. So I actually went and did the gel top coat first and just be very careful when applying these um, acrylic on top of that. 
you know, take your time with it, guys. Um, it could be tedious work, you know, but consistency is key here. I didn't start off making beautiful flowers, you know. Um, once you learn how to play with the acrylic, you'll get better with it. You know, every acrylic um, brand is very different. You just got to adjust to, um, you know, their acrylic and you have to adjust to your uh, way of maneuvering the acrylic as well. Um, as you can see, I'm not applying so much pressure. I'm just gently going in and um, creating these indents uh, slowly, one at a time. If the acrylic dries too quick, that's where you see me um, forcing the acrylic more versus if it's not too uh, dry, then you want to be very light with it because then you, you end up smushing it. So, you, you know, you just got to play around with it and don't give up. I know you're gonna get frustrated sometimes if you can't get it but guess what I've seen so many in, in the time that I've been doing nails myself included I've seen so many people that get frustrated so hard and they want to give up and then I see them a year later in their journey and they're killing it so you know just don't give up just keep going um, keep practicing it'll all come to you I promise you that you know I used to just practice every time that I could and eventually I got to be where I'm at and it's all dedicated to the time and the consistency that you put on it okay it doesn't come overnight it doesn't matter how many YouTube videos you watch if you just start it it will not come overnight you have to practice okay practice practice and keep practicing once you keep practicing you get accustomed to it once you get accustomed to it, you get better at it. And then, you know, you'll just be like, oh my God, I'm here already. You know, I got this down packed. And next thing you know, you're inspiring and helping other people. So don't give up. This is a beautiful industry to be a part of. Aside of, yes, drama sometimes, but that's everywhere, guys. No matter where it is, even in the medical field, there's going to be drama, you know? Wherever there's people, there's going to be drama. But guess what? Ignore the drama. You know, dedicate your time to you. Dedicate your time to be better, become better. And you'll see you're going to just exceed your own expectations. Okay? So don't give up. Keep practicing. That's what I want to tell you guys. And eventually, you'll be there. You'll get there. Okay? So thank you for watching this video you guys i really hope you enjoyed it if you did i'm hoping that you can give my video a thumbs up a comment subscribe thank you so much for tuning in once again and yeah i hope you like this video